brought his beautiful skill with cording and riffing and and a much harder edge and he was very disciplined he was a, he'd come from session work he was a very professional guy you know and he was ambitious and he was fresh so he brought all that energy into the last 18 months of the band you know what i would have called the, the harder edged precursor led zeppelin uh mood with jimmy page jimmy's tenure with the yardbirds turned out to be short-lived but something bigger was waiting right around the corner you know after sort of working for a long period and no money at the end of it and all that sort of thing there was big management disputes just no chance as much as jimmy wanted to keep it going they finally decided there are other things they could do and, and I think there were different musical things going on with everybody. He knew and we knew, we all knew that this was the Yardbirds last tour um, and he also knew that he was going to get the name and you knew from the musicianship that he, he had that anyone who was going to be in the band with him had to be up to that caliber which was going to be very high. John Paul Jones of course knew Jimmy from the old uh, uh, session days and he said listen he said I heard you're forming a band he said I wouldn't mind going on the road you know what's it gonna be and that's how they all got together I was moping around the house one day and my missus said to me will you stop moping around the house why don't you join a band or something she said Jimmy Page is forming a group he just left the yard first she said why don't you give him a ring you know <laughs> my brother calls me he says this Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones have gotten together. I went, fucking hell. Those two? John Paul's like an expert. John Paul's the music boffin. So they had the music boffin in the background, <laughs> who's a good keyboard player, good bass player, you know, brilliant musician. The two singers actually had a, had an underground sort of name at that time in '68 with Joe Cocker and Terry Reid. He asked me to be the singer in this new band he's putting together, which I was very impressed. I said, "I'd love to do this. Can you hold that thought? If you're not in now, you're out." Terry Reid couldn't do it. He said, "I know this great singer who lives in Wolverhampton or wherever called Robert Plant." So Jimmy and Peter went up to see Robert Plant perform somewhere. Jimmy was so impressed with Robert Plant's singing that he invited the fledgling vocalist to his boathouse on the Thames, where the two discovered they shared the same love of the blues. Robert was now in, and the pieces were falling into place. Robert is amazing. He was just, you know, the boy from Birmingham. He had such a powerful, strong presence about him. I don't know, when Robert walked in a room, you just noticed him. Robert Plant immediately went to work convincing his friend, drummer John Bonham, to join the new band. Bonzo didn't want to join the band for the longest time. He was earning good money in the local dance band, I suppose. He didn't want to jeopardize that. He didn't want to leave. Encouraged by the enthusiasm of his old friend, Robert Plant, John Bonham accepted Page's offer and decided to join. The first time we, we all met in this little room in Gerrard Street just to see if we could even stand each other, you know. So we said, well, you know, we're all here, you know, what are we going to play? And Jimmy said, well, I'm a, do you know an uncle called the train? The train kept to rolling. No. <laughs> we said, well, it's this easy, it's just, just go, you know, just sort of on an even, just the G to the G. And then, and then, and then. So he started off. So he said, all right, then, then. Okay, count it in. And suddenly went. <laughs> the room exploded. Oh, and then we just looked at each other and said, right, we're on, you know, this is it. This is gonna work. The chemistry amongst the four of them, their 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 look, their sound, their knowledge of music. Bonham's steady anchor on the drums, Pedro's riffs. They knew how how at the time had a jam and not lose the jam. They knew when to come back at the proper time very tightly. Robert brought a lot of the blues to Zepp to Led Zeppelin. You know, he was a real blues man, great heart player, you know, great front man, looked the part, but he was a real blueser. Bonzo was just this unreal drummer. So they were they were a great package. Oh. 
under the name of the New Yardbird. Because <laughs> nobody else would book it under anything else, you know. You know, oh, who the hell are they? Oh, Jimmy, well, we know Jimmy Page, and you know, we know the Yardbirds. You're going to have to be the New Yardbird. We rehearsed an act, an album, on a tour <laughs> in about three weeks, and uh, it took off. He had gigs that were contracted under the name the Yardbirds, so Zeppelin did their, you know, first six, eight gigs under that new Yardbirds name. And one day I had a call from uh, Jimmy and he actually came up to the office um, kind of unannounced really, he just wandered in. He'd like to review I'd done of uh, one of his bands he'd been in years before. So he thought, oh well, I'll speak to this guy Chris and uh, tell him about my new group. And I said, well, what's it called? He said, it's uh, Led Zeppelin. And I wrote it in my uh, notepad and I misspelt it. I wrote L-E-A-D. And he said, no, no, L-E-D. So. I had the scoop on uh, this amazing new band. They chose the name Led Zeppelin through the hoe, actually, because there was a story that Keith Moon and uh, John Entwistle had uh, planned to uh, split from the Who. They wanted to form a, a supergroup. I think Jimmy Page was involved in that, actually. We were all drunk, you know, as usual. And they were bringing up the thing, oh, we want to leave the Who, we want to start a new band, and then they were bantering around names. But the guy who came up with the name Led Zeppelin was actually John Entwistle, it wasn't Keith Moon. And how it came about is there was an old saying in England that, you know, it'll go down like a Led Zeppelin, which means it'll bomb. After fulfilling all of the previously booked dates as the new Yardbirds, the band made its official debut as Led Zeppelin at Surrey University in England on October 25th, 1968. Really, the, the basis of their of their um, of their sound was, was the Yardbirds sound. And I remember Jimmy playing me their first album, and called Dazed and Confused was on there. We used to play that, and they did their own version, which wasn't far away. Um, and they did a couple of other things that were pretty similar. It was a springboard, our sound was a springboard for them, but they took it a bit further, they took it into that early uh, heavy metal really. It was like, just really like a jam, things like How Many More Time and Days and Confused were really just extensions of how, how well we actually fitted together, you know. The qualities of Led Zeppelin 1 can never be touched, never be matched, never be equal. The first time I heard Led Zeppelin, I put on this, the record, and uh, I listened to it, I said, wow, I really didn't know who those guys were. I knew who Jimmy Page was, I didn't know who they were. The sound of the, the record was, was really impressive. Still, to this day, you put it on, it puts most other stuff to shame. The first song I heard of theirs was Good Times, Bad Times, and I was immediately struck by this drumming. I'd never heard this drumming before. The communication breakdown, you know, the first time you hear it, it was like, oh my God, and you tried to play the break, and it was just too damn fast, you know, so you'd wind up scratching your records, trying to slow it down and play it backwards, and, you know, all of my records had these, these needle marks that went straight across from trying to learn the guitar breaks. They wanted us to take them on tour with us as an opening act, which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it now. Um, and I was just blown away. The tour was paid for underwritten by Jimmy Page, Peter Grant and John Paul Jones. The other two, Bonham and Plant, were on salaries. There was five shows with the Vanilla Fudge. It was actually in the one in uh, Oregon where I really realized, and during the drum solo. And I was standing there with Jones here and I just said to Jesus Christ, where did you find this guy? I think that they're coming to listen to what you're playing and not just to look at you and see what you are. I mean, I remember when I was, let's go back a few years, when I first went to see the Beatles, because we've mentioned them a few times, it was to look at them, you know. It, mm. it wasn't, you didn't really bother what, what you were listening to. Yeah. And today, well, it, it's not what you are, it's yes. what you're playing. Well, Bonzo was the best hard rock drummer ever, hands down. I mean, no one comes within a mile of him. He kept great time, he was fearless. He'd do things that you think, you know, how, how is he... How is he going to do this? He was the best. Being the drummer, first my attention went to John Bonham and his foot thing that he did in Good Times, Bad Times, which was at the time totally unique, had I thought that. Upon meeting him, he said to me uh, that I got that from you. I said, I know, I don't do that. And he pointed out on the Vanilla Fudge album where I actually did it one time. And he took it and took it to the extreme. The audience just didn't know what to believe, what they were seeing and hearing. 